Hey, Grant. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another day and another episode of the Grant Cardone um, and the Matt Buchanan podcast coming at you guys this morning. <laughs> I didn't know we were doing a podcast together, man. <laughs> Very excited to have Grant on here. For those of you, everybody everybody knows Grant Cardone, but for those of you who don't or, or for those of you who are introduced to him for the first time, he has 21 best-selling books, over $2 billion in real estate now. Um, he has the number one marketing conference in the entire world. He has, he has been voted as the number one marketing influencer by Forbes. Um, no, the number one sales trainer in the entire world. Um, he by far is the single person and the, the person behind changing my entire life, my family's life, everybody on my team's life. Grant, I don't know how, how else to express my appreciation for you. And I know you're very, very busy. So um, I really appreciate you being on here, but I just wanted to first just really um, acknowledge, I mean, you are an absolute world changer and I respect and appreciate and admire everything you're doing so much. And I mean that. Come on, man. Come on, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Um, I know, you, I know uh, you're super, super busy and really appreciate you taking this here. Uh, my first question would be is um, what are your tips for handling taxes when you're making about 1.2 million a year? You need assets. You need assets that you can. So uh, one, you either you either need load up your expenses. So you could you could do three things. You could just spend a million one point dollars and not have a profit. That would not include a salary to you because that's going to pass through as income. Um, so you could just spend all the money, advertising, marketing, um, sales, uh, rent. Or you could um, you could uh, lose money. <laughs> That's always an alternative. But but most importantly, you need to start buying assets that, that you can depreciate. Okay. So for instance, I would take that net cash flow of a million to net net to you, right? Um, you know, to get tax advantages, you have to use money. Get some miraculous tax. However, there's a lot of little things you can do, like buying a vehicle that I think it's over 5,700 pounds. The entire uh, Range Rover would be tax deductible. But that doesn't really make sense to go spend $150,000 to write off 75. Your tax bracket is a million, your net, net a million two. If, if your gross adjustable is a million two, uh, maybe four, $450,000 in taxes on that. So you're going to go spend 150,000 to write off 75,000. You still owe 375, but you got 100. You got 150 less than you had. So look, the tax game is a is a is a cash flow game. You cannot play the tax game without cash flow. So um, the third the third thing you could do, if I'm on the third thing, I think I am, is you can give money away to charities. I give a million to. I think Trump's going to actually increase. Deduct 100%. I need to look that. I think that was changed in this bill. Um, I know he's been fighting for this for years. I'm I am only allowed 50% of my adjusted AGI, adjusted gross income, to write off against taxes. So if I make $10 million in a year, I a million away right off. About the whole 10. I think Trump's changing that to 10, where I get the, the whole thing written off, which would be very cool. But again, yeah, let's say that I made a million dollars, I give a million dollars away, I'm broke. I didn't pay taxes. Which personally, I would rather give the money away than give the money away. You know what I'm saying? I like to give the money away to something that could actually do good rather than give the money away to a bunch of bunch of people I'll never meet. They'll never be at my house. They'll never help me. They'll never like they have roads and schools and hospitals with. Mm -hmm. So, but again, to play the tax game, we're probably, you probably got your question a little bit out of order. You can't play the tax game. You got to have cat until you have cash flow. Now the fourth best way to do it is to buy assets 
that could provide you with more income. Because the first three, the first scenarios I gave you don't produce income for you. The other way is I would go buy dollars worth of real estate with a million dollars. I'd use it all, by the way. I wouldn't even keep a reserve. Okay. I, I reserve game. That, that's not the game to play. Use it all. Don't even keep an emergency fund. Susie Armand's going to think I'm crazy right now. but um, Yeah, but she's not Uncle G. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so by the way, I did a deal after her. I was in Singapore. I did a, no, I did a deal. I did a deal before her. I did a, a what was it called? A teleported me in or a tele, a telecast. Telecast. And I smoked this off in New York. And she told the guy run the event. She's like, I got to follow that. <laughs> so, um, you buy, take a million dollars, buy $4 million worth of assets. And you would literally depreciate, not the million dollars you invested, but the $4 million of property that you bought would be depreciated over the next 27 years, some of which could be accelerated in the first three to five years. Wow. Which would wipe out tax bills. The fifth thing you could do, you could do. I'm on the fifth right now. The fifth thing you could do is go buy a jet because you can write off the whole thing the first year. But then you got to fund, you got to take care of that bad boy. And I strongly advise everybody watching and listening. Love your interview. This is a good podcast. Nobody ever asked the good questions. Uh, I had to wait till Matthew got on here. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Dude, dude, you're going to go buy a jet. If you're going to go buy a jet, you got to take care of that thing next year. The purchasing of, a, of an aircraft is not the issue. It's, it's feeding that, that beast because they hungry. Les Brown told me once, he's like, man, you are hungry. I said, bro, you don't even know what hungry is until you buy a Gulfstream 550. <laughs> wow. That's so true. Well, that's awesome, Greg. Thank you for that. And then my other question would be, what's the number one thing you've learned about money in your uh, Humble podcast, by the way. We're doing humble podcasts when we start with ta taxes. <laughs> What, what would you say the number one thing you've learned about money in your relationship with, with money would be? Yeah, look, my, I have been, my whole life, I was just very, very, uh, I've always been, um, based on what I understood, whatever I understood about money, I, I was disciplined enough to do it. So the first thing, years of my life, maybe 45 years, I was into the saving mentality, extremely disciplined. Um, I mean, you guys see all the flair and you, you know, you see me making all these, you know, audacious and the jet and the cars and stuff today, but that, that is not how I operated early on, uh, which, which would repeat, I, I would live like a pauper and, and invest like Prince or a king. Love that. Uh, and, 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 and I was half right, but I sat on too much cash. I did not understand that cash is garbage uh, until I was in my 50s. And then I was like, dude, everybody getting rich is putting it all on the table. I was in Vegas once and I had a, I don't know, two hours of good hands. Every time I've ever won in Vegas, every single time I've ever won on a blackjack table, I walked away saying, bro, you just don't bet enough. My life right there, man. I was walking away winning 25,000 and I'm winning 250, $250. I'm like, four hours to win 200 bucks. They walked away with 25 grand because they, because they pushed and I didn't push. I've always been, I've always been, this has been the, biggest weakness of my life. It was that I didn't, didn't, as bold as I might look to people, when it came to money, I got extremely, uh, 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 I'm gonna go ahead and word, because we haven't canceled it yet. I was a little bitch. <laughs> it came to money, I just, I bitched out. I, I, I just, and that's not a reference to a female. Uh, that, that, that's about me turning into a little baby, a little punk, a little, a little whiner and, and I get, I get, I get scared. Now the reason I was, the reason I didn't invest money was underneath that um, was my fear to reproduce money because I basically had a limited concept yeah. at, uh, about how, how I, how more money would always come to me. 
And now I know, as long as you've got good work ethic, you're not overspending, you're not an idiot, you don't have a drug problem, you're not doing, you're not wasting alcohol on the weekends, you're not waking up with hangovers eight days of the week, eight days of the month, um, you're hanging around good people, you're looking at your finances every day, you don't have a thief, you're not taking shortcuts, you're not a criminal. As long as those things up and you're working your ass off, you are going to get the, the, the universe will always provide for those people uh, that drive to the basket. If I can just get in layup range, dude, I don't need to be low. So just keep smart. into the basket. If I just keep showing the basket, I'll, I'll drop a shot. If I keep getting up to bat, I'll hit a ball. And look, the money game's a lot easier than being LeBron or an MLB player, right? Because number one, number one, the time I have in the money game is a lot longer than LeBron will have on the basketball court. He'll have a career three times longer than the average ball player. So the you know the, the money game, the business to the marketplace, dude, it's a long, long game. Like you got, I, I I could I still make money. I could make money the day I died. I'd be like, hold on, one more deal, one more deal, one more deal. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I took what you said last year and I went all in on it. I literally went into debt to get to the deep dive last year I, after I went to a few boot camps in the growth conference. And then I did the 10X 360, the, the, all, everything, everything you guys have had, I've done pretty much. Um, I just did the platform. So I, I everything you said, I 100% agree with. And that's why I'm really grateful for you being on here. Um, last question here. And I know you have to run. My yeah, last and, and, you know, let me just say something. Because somebody, somebody posted like, yesterday by a kid. Yeah, thank you, thank you. You changed your life, by the way. You did, because you're the one that showed up, and you're the one that planted the tree that watered it, and you're the one back. Rather than, you know, being Johnny Appleseed and throwing throwing seeds of fertilizer everywhere, you came back and re re fertilized that. You you repeated where something that too many people, man, they wander everywhere. They go to every bar in town uh, to to get a drink. Uh, I, I was doing this project recently, and they're like, why do you keep going back to the same place over and over? I picked two places to go back to every day. I was trying to get known. And um, they said, why do you keep going back to the same place? I said, bro, because like, I already made an investment here yesterday and the day before and the day before. I'm not going to go to a new place. I'm going to keep making investments here. Too many people just skip. They just, they just jump around. They, they, they're flighty rather than making investments in one thing. Um, I was going to say something else to you, but I forgot what it was. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little excited there for a second. <laughs> and you're doing great. You're doing great. You know, oh, yeah, I know what it was. No, uh, this guy posted 99% of all self-improvement courses are a scam. And I'm like, that's sad. That's I really believe that. That's sad. Because if you don't do self-improvement, first of all, I'll tell you that if you believe self-improvement is it will not work 100% of the time. But anybody that's that distorted, that they think I'm going to do some self-improvement. Dude, if I do self-improvement, it's going to work on me. Like I've read bad books that help me. There's no book, nothing I have ever done that hurt me. Okay. No, you give me scam material. You could give me some bullshit. Give me a liar, a thief, a charlatan, watch and listen to him and I will learn something from that presentation and that's about on me that's not on him by the way and shame on you guys shame on all of you out there that don't do stuff because you're worried about a scam because the only person that says that is the scammer you got a scam that person that said that is a scammer in their core they're scamming someone that's why they see scam everywhere and you know, it's like it's like the kids that are that are tearing buildings down right now. They see a building, they say, "Let's burn it down." I see a building, they say, let's build it up, fill it with tenants, and make money off of it forever, and get some insurance on it, so that if somebody burns it down, I get paid twice, <laughs> not once. <laughs> Love it. That's that is the ten x mentality right there. That's amazing. Uh, my last question, my last question, Grant, would be. How did you start off with social media and what does that mean to you? 
I started off, I mean, I started off with social media the same way everybody does. No followers. I didn't understand it. I didn't know how to use it. I don't pretend that I know how to use it now. Um, you know, I'm still today. So, um, I don't know how to use TikTok. I really don't understand what to do with it. I, 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 I'm, you know, it's LinkedIn. I ignore it more, more than I use it. And I have tremendous uh, potential there. Um, you know, for all the criticism I get about being cocky and know it all and listen to how many times I say, I don't know anything about it because there's a lot of stuff I don't know anything about. Mm. Now, the things that I, uh, I'm convinced that, that, that I'm doing it the right way. Otherwise, if I wasn't convinced I'm doing it the right way, why would I be doing it? You know, we, we, we bought $860 million worth of real estate last year. I'm, I need to be pretty I'm doing the right thing. Uh, otherwise, well, what am I doing? So on the Facebook, on the Instagram, I hate these mechanisms, by the way. They, they, I, I touch them. I'm like, this is so just most of what I see there is just, uh, it's just, it's just, you know, it's like, I, I mean, recently I've been blocking people. I'm like, I can't even handle this messaging. Um, because it's just so negative. It just goes no place now. Now, but, but I do want to use it, uh, and not become dependent upon it, uh, to get my, mind and hope somebody to, to be familiar with it. So to me, they're all the same. Like they all the same. They all serve a purpose that they're, they're all very similar in some ways. Uh, they got different audiences, but, um, you know, they're, they're necessary evils. That's a good point. Good point. Well, thank you, Grant. I know we're going over here. Really appreciate your time so much. You're the man, Matt. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, guys. Okay? you do to repay you, let me know. You Come on, man. Work. Just be, You know how you repay me, bro? Go out there and be Jared great. Yeah, Jared told me. Got to tell everybody. That's what I've been doing. Go out there and be great, man. Everybody be like, dude, what are you on? Oh, I'm on some Grant Cardone. <laughs> You got it. Yes, sir. Be great, brother. Thank you. Take care.